What's up y'all, I'm out here at the range on a fantastic sunny day. Nice cool breeze blowing to keep me cool while I'm doing some testing out here. So I'm gonna keep things rolling out here with a little head to head between some 10 mil and 357 Magnum. So of course we got the jelly contraption set up with the lab radar and two blocks of gel. Now I've done one test already in this front block here. It was a 380 test, so I'll leave a link above if y'all wanna check that out. Plenty of room though to put these in here where y'all can still see what's going on. Obviously I've got that heavy clothing barrier on the front with a layer of denim, fleece, and two layers of cotton t-shirt. And what we're taking a look at here today is a couple of Federal Fusion rounds. Fusion, obviously, Federal's bonded soft point projectile. I've got them here in 357 Magnum and 10 millimeter. Now, these are geared towards hunting rounds, so I really wasn't gonna test these, but I've had people asking me to test these 10 mil, and I've actually had this 357 mag sitting around for quite a while that I never have gotten around to testing. So since all I have in 10 mil at the moment is this g20 and i wanted to test this because people want me to test it i'm gonna go ahead and test it out of that g20 i don't know if it's gonna have the velocity to get these things to expand but maybe it will now i will tell you i do have something coming in 10 mil that's longer than this and when i say longer i'm not talking g40 i'm talking much much longer so i know what i've got coming will get these things to expand for sure but we're gonna see what happens out here with the shorter barrels anyway so i've got the 10 mil 200 grain again bonded soft point the velocity is saying 1200 at the muzzle i didn't even look on their site to see if they uh showed what barrel length they got that out of so i'm not positive there and like i said since i only have the one g20 to test 10 with for now i figured i might as well go and put this 357 mag in the same test so 158 grain on this one and since i'm using the g20 i stayed with a shorter barrel for this too now this is saying 1240 feet per second at the muzzle again i did not look to see what barrel length or anything here's your projectiles on both of them nice looking projectile with the soft point there now it's not just a rounded soft point so i've got a little bit of hope for these things as you can see there's some pretty decent sized divots on both of them so maybe we'll get some expansion even with the short barrels but as far as what i'm running them out of obviously i already talked about the g20 here i believe that's a 4.6 inch barrel they call that one and then for the 357 i'm gonna use my ruger gp100 here with the four inch barrel now those y'all who know the difference between the measuring in semis and revolvers know that even this is a four even though this is four inch this is 4.6 inch the way these things are measured they're really really similar in barrel size if anything the ruger actually may have just a tiny bit of an edge as far as effective barrel length so even though this isn't really the platform that these rounds are made to be run from it should be interesting to see what they do let me get this stuff set up and let's find out all right, let's see if we can get us some speeds on these things. I'm gonna do a five round average for each one, starting with the 10 mil first. Um, now remember, this is saying 1200 on the box. Again, if y'all aren't familiar with my lab radar, you'll get multiple readings here. You're gonna get a large number for the muzzle, and then you'll get five additional readings on the bottom. You're gonna have uh, three yards, uh, 10 yards, 15, 25, and 50. The 50 will be pretty significant on, on this 10 because that's kind of one of the ways people measure uh, a true 10 millimeter if you will so let's see what these things do y'all five round average 1144 1126 1141 1129 and 1115 so not that 1200 but i will tell you right now y'all know how i am about 10 mil i can just feel 10 mil and tell you if it's worth if it's any count if it's worth anything this right here feels pretty good i'll just tell you right now um as far as the energy i mean definitely you can get better energy but this right here does feel good it feels better than a lot of the 10 mil i've run but let's check out the average on it and see where we at all right, so for this fusion out of the G20, we got an average of 1,131 feet per second. We had an extreme spread of 30 and a standard deviation of 12. So 1,131 with a 200 grain projectile, not awful by any means. I'd like to see a little more. I'd like to get that 12 out of this G20, to be honest with you, but not terrible. Like I said, it's better than a lot I have tested, but let's get it reset and check out that 357. All right, let's check out this 357, y'all. Uh, just something else to note on that velocity I was just 
just looking back at it, all of the 50 yarders on that 10 mil were comfortably over a thousand feet per second still at 50 yards. And that's one of the measurements of a so-called true 10 mil is to hold a thousand feet per second with a 200 grain projectile at 50 yards. So like I said, I would personally rather see a little bit more, but it's better than some I've run. But anyway, let's see what this 357 mag will do. Five rounds it. Now remember the box on this was saying 1240. So let's see how close we get with this one. Thirteen twenty-eight, thirteen thirty-four, thirteen eighteen, thirteen thirty-five, and twelve ninety-one. That last one dropped for one e or for whatever reason, but all the rest of them were comfortably over twelve forty. Let's check that average out. All right, y'all, that 357 really did its thing. We had an average on that of 1321, and that was even with that low of 1291. That last one was low for whatever reason. The rest of them were, were pretty consistent from what I remember until then. So 1321 average, our extreme spread went up to 44 with a standard deviation of 18.3 because of that last round for sure. So 1321 average well exceeded the 1240 on the box. So I don't know what barrel length they got that reading out of but this definitely met it so 1321 there and if you remember on that 10 mil it was 1131 so you're talking about 190 feet per second faster out of that 357 magnum now that really doesn't mean anything because it's the different calibers different weights but pretty interesting to see that as far as the performance in the gel i still just don't know now after feeling that 10 mil i do feel a little better about it but i'm still gonna put some towels and stuff at the end to catch it in case they go too far but let me get this stuff set up y'all know what time it is is. All right, y'all, it's short but sweet jelly time. I'm gonna put one round of each into the gel, starting with the 10 mil here first. I'm really just worried that these things are going the distance out both blocks. So I got some towels back there. Hopefully I'm wrong though, and they'll mushroom out real good. And give us something interesting to look at here. Ah, it came out, but I think it came out the side let me go see what i got All right, y'all, sure enough, the doggone thing popped out of the side. That was absolutely perfect placement too. Now it's gonna do, make me a big old mess down there. I'm gonna put another one though. I don't think we're gonna have any expansion and it's going all the way, I believe. Let me see if I can keep this halfway clean. Now that was exactly where I wanted it the first time. Hopefully that one stayed in. Let me go check it out. All right, sure enough, y'all, that one went the distance all the way through both blocks. I did catch it, though. I've got both the projectiles we'll take a look at. Now, let's try this 357 mag. I don't have the best host for this now, although it's moving quite a bit faster and lighter, so maybe we'll get a little something out of this one. Oh, I went where I wanted. Hopefully it didn't curve out. Let me go see what I got. All right, let's check out what we got down here, y'all. As messy as this stuff looks on first glance, it's actually placed pretty much perfect to see where everything is. So what we'll look at first here is the 10 mil. So it took two, two uh, 10 mils. The first one is this one right here, right here in the front. Nice disruption going on here. Now, obviously no expansion because it's not an expander. Now, did it mushroom out? No, I know that for a fact because it's sitting down here, but you did get some nice uh, disruption anyway. So come through here. Here through the first block looks like it dumped a lot of cloth so it was actually pushing a lot of cloth with it into this second block it kept on trucking kept on going it was curving over to the side a little bit and actually popped out the side right here right at the end of y'all screen and the, the uh, projectiles laying right down here on the table i'll show you here in a second and then the second 10 mil is actually the one right up above it this one right here again looks really similar not maybe not as much disruption for whatever reason but 
but really, really similar through this first block. Again, uh, dumps a little bit of cloth, not as much cloth either, but carries through the first block into the second block and this one kept on rolling it didn't curve out or anything it went straight on completely out the back side of that second block and then last but not least down at the very bottom that's the 357 pretty much the same story with that one nice disruption from it you can tell here all the way through that first block into the second block again keeps on trucking now right here out of y'all screen i'll show you when i pick you up looks like it may have tumbled right there towards the end of its travel and again this one here and after that tumble area it took a hard curve downward but it didn't it still went straight out the end of the block there so again total pass through of both blocks with that 357 so obviously no need to measure them they both are all three of them would have went completely out both blocks the one that popped out the side just curved but no doubt about it all of them went full complete 32 inches here's a little bit closer look at an angle so you can kind of see it separated that one again is the 10 mil that's the 357 we'll follow them through here that's the 10 mil that actually popped out the side kept on going and right there it popped out the side and it's laying right here as you can see and then back to catch the 357 you can see once it goes into this block right there is where I'm pretty sure that was a tumble because then you can see it took a hard turn downward and if we take a peek here there's our projectile sitting right down there and then the last one we'll look from above this was the second 10 mil so nothing really fantastic as far as disruption but it did do some disruption there keeps on going through here this one right here all the way through all the way through that second block a straight line you can see it goes out right there and there's your projectile sitting down there all right, let's check out these projectiles, y'all. Nothing real exciting to see here, kind of like the 380 test I just did. This one right here is your 357 Magnum, and then these are your 210 mils. This is the one that went straight out the end, and this is the one that came out the side. I'm willing to bet that this right here, the only reason this is like that is because it hit the towel sideways because I don't know how well this is going to show you but you can even see the uh, uh, pattern from the towel, the indention and all. So I'm almost positive that got pulled open because of the towel. Here's the one that went out the end here and it looks just like the 357 that went out the end. Oddly enough, they actually got some clogging of material in that front divot there. So clogged up that. I don't know if that had anything to do with it not mushrooming. I guess it could. I mean, it's kind of like clogging up a HP, same kind of deal there. So maybe that did have something to do with it. But uh, whatever the case, as you can see, no mushrooming at all from these things. But let's get a few measurements on them and see what we got. So the 10 mil started at 200. This one here that's kind of jagged and opened a little bit off the towel is at 199.4, so may have lost a little crumb. It could just be tolerances. Uh, this other 10 mil here is 200.1, so nothing lost on that one, probably a little pickup of the cloth even. And then your 357 started at 158, and it's at 157.4, so as far as I can tell, no loss on any of them. Now, as far as measuring the size of them, there's really not a whole lot to look at here. I'm gonna do the bases, but I'll go ahead and do this one here that's got that little partial expansion. You got 487 on that right there. Again, though, I'm willing to bet that that's just because it hit the towel there. So if we check out just the bases of them, you got 393 on that one, 392 on this one. And then I'll check out the length here, but I wanted to show you right quick. I actually pulled that cloth out of that 10 mil and you can see there. So I'd say getting clogged in that little divot does have a little bit to do with it not mushrooming correctly. But anyway, as far as the length on them, you got 662 on that one and 654 on this jagged one and then on your 357 here the base on it is 356 and then the same thing going on here when i pull the cloth out of the end of that 357 but as far as the length on it you got 661 so there you have it y'all the federal fusion in 10 mil and 357 magnum kind of what i expected to see here i really didn't expect to see mushrooming out of these shorter barrels although the 357 exceeded the velocity on the box so i guess 
guess we probably should have seen some expansion on this one or mushrooming. Now the 10 mil a little bit short, but not all that short. So I really don't know why we didn't see any mushrooming out of these. It may just be a case of needing even more speed or it could have been that clogging. But either way, I mean, as far as hunting purposes, you know, you really don't really need a bunch of expansion. I mean, these would do the trick, but I don't know that I would personally pick these up to do any kind of hunting or anything out of short barrels. Um, as far as defensive purposes, I mean, they act like a hard cast. So if you're good with that, you'd be good with these. Me personally, I think these are more suited for a longer type barrel and I'm looking forward to getting that longer tin that I talked about. So once I get these, I'll do a revisit of both of these out of longer barrels. But as for now, let me know what y'all think about the performance from these short barrels. All right, y'all, I'm gonna call it right there for what was a pretty interesting Federal Fusion test. I really don't know what to think about the performance from these. Really, it's been the first time that I've been kind of disappointed with Fusions. Uh, the stuff that I've tested in the larger caliber as far as Fusion goes has been absolutely fantastic, but I really can't help but feel like these are meant to be sent from longer barrels just because they're hunting rounds. I mean, that's their purpose. But then when you take a closer look at what happened with them out here today, I don't even know if that's a valid excuse to use because the 357 magnums it got the speed on the box and then some so you can't say that speed is a reason for the failure on that one now it did clog up pretty good with that cloth but if it clogs up with that cloth then what is hide gonna do to it if, if you're using it for a hunting round so i really don't know what to think about these and what was the problem out here today because i definitely say there was a problem you didn't get any kind of mushroom and any kind of expansion at all and you were supposed to get a little something out of these anyway i'm definitely going to revisit both both of these when I get that longer barrel 10 mil in and run the, the longer barrel 10 and a longer barrel 357 mag just to see exactly what the difference in performance is. But let me know what y'all think about the performance from these shorter barrels out here today. Any of y'all use these fusions in either one of these calibers or other calibers for hunting purposes? Let me know down in the comments if you do and what's been your experience with them. If you enjoyed the video, reach down and hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you got your notifications turned on so you don't miss anything that I upload. If you're doing some shopping, like I always remind you, check out those affiliate links in the video description. I just added that new campsite link that's got a few more uh, affiliate links once you get there. So check that out. Anything you buy from those links down there, I get a kickback from them towards the channel. So I really appreciate that. Once again, I appreciate all my range gang members and every single one of y'all for supporting the channel. I've got a couple more interesting things planned for out here today. So stay on the lookout. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see you soon.